Our guest this morning is an entertainer, actor, songwriter, all the way from London. It's with great pleasure I'd like to introduce Joey Lewis in our studios this morning. Good morning and welcome to our program. Good morning, Derek. Thank you for having me here. And see, after, after the Jetliners, you would have toured all these places. And uh, uh, in I think in 78, you left Sri Lanka. Am I right on that? Well, actually, I, 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 with, with the Jetliners, we, when we went to, to India, um, we then, Desmond, Minon and I went to Japan and represented Sri Lanka at uh, the World Popular Song Festival, the Yamaha okay. World, Popular Song, uh, World Popular Song Festival. Yeah. And that was the year that Demi Roussos won. My God, know. he said the singer who used to sing forever. And that's, <laughs> that's the guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, My Friend the Wind and yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was the year, the, he, the year he won. So we were up against guys like Demi Roussos. Oh, and, yeah, and, that's and, a big time. Yeah, some of the you know yeah. uh, some of the most f f famous artists of the That's day right, yeah. um, and uh, I mean I was surprised that they were all performing in so I saw three piece band Desmond no we went as a singing group oh, it's a singing group yeah okay. that was Desmond Minon and I yeah. we, we went as a as a as a group yeah. as a singing vocal group oh, rather yeah. than a yeah. rather than a band as it were and um, I mean Demis Roussos came out of Aphrodite's child who had already had so many big hits, I think, yeah, at, the, at yeah. the time. So I was gobsmacked to be, to be amongst all these guys and yeah. talking to them as if you yeah. know, they were buddies and jamming yeah. with the, the musicians yeah, and all yeah. of that. Um, and he won that year. So, but that was what kickstarted my, uh, uh, not so much kick, but gave me the urge or, or, yeah. or the interest to take my writing yeah. more seriously. Yeah. Uh, because up until then. So three of you represented Sri Lanka? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, yeah. we performed there, and then we went to Hong Kong, the three of us, and we did some television stuff mm. there, and then went back to in India and joined uh, joined up with the boys again. Yeah. Um, but that was what made me want to take my writing okay. more seriously. So all those achievements there in Sri Lanka, and after that, you from Sri Lanka, you went to uh, 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 England, and uh, how did how how did you start your career there? Well, I I, I was very lucky because I I had sort of inadvertently at some point sent my uncle uh, some some uh, tapes I think it was of you know those days it was the cassette tapes cassette, and yeah. you know uh, now you can send it in seconds over, yeah. over, over the internet but those days you had to post it and yeah. register post yeah. it and all of that but um, I had sent it to my uncle who uh, at the time uh, was uh, the buyer of one of the world's most f uh, the musical instruments uh, Buyer yeah. for one of the world's most famous shops called Harrods oh, really? in, 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 in yeah. Knightsbridge, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was a yeah. huge achievement for, yeah. for Silanese or Sri yeah. Lanka to, 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 to get to that stage. And of course, his, his clients were yeah. Cliff Richards and yeah. everybody who was everybody when they Especially wanted to buy. Store. <laughs> when you talk about Harrods, if it's it's whoever wanted to buy a piano yeah. or yeah. went to him. Yeah, that's right. You know, okay. so, and I think I'd sent him a cassette or something like okay. that, and he'd given it to someone who had given it to someone else, mm -hmm. and uh, and I just somebody contacted me and said, you know, we'd like to talk to you about your music, and so there I was. I I I, I, I took off to England, and I was very lucky because from the time I got there, things things happened very very fast. Um, On the music side, uh, Joey, uh, okay, you you got that sort of uh, opening there. Uh, will you be able to briefly uh, tell our viewers how, how about your acting career also? <laughs> My acting career was a wonderful 
little opportunity that came out of the blue because mm -hmm. I, I, I was the, the downside of it was I, I was I was um, involved in a, in a legal battle with my one of my publishers about mm -hmm. my songs um, and I, I didn't want to write anything at the time of, you know I was very disillusioned with everything and I met up with a very famous Sri Lankan Sillanese man called Chris Greet mm -hmm. who was a very good friend of my mother's right. do you remember Chris yeah, Greet yeah, yeah well, Chris yeah. Greet Chris was doing very well there as, as, an, an actor. as an actor, okay, yeah, um, and he was a very good friend of my mom's, and I happened to bump into him one day, and I went uh, and and met him and his wife, and we were having a chat, and he said, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Well, I'm taking it easy at the moment because this is what's happening." And he said, "Well, why didn't you start acting?" And I said, "Because I have never acted." Yes. So he said, "Well, now's the time to start," <laughs> you yes. know, and he he sort of took me by my ear down to his uh, agent. Uh, she signed me up, and the next thing I knew was I was on television and all of that stuff, and I had an extraordinary, wonderful time okay. as an actor doing all that. So, how did you juggle uh, the acting and your uh, songwriting together? Well, when I first started uh, the, the acting thing, I was taking a break from my songwriting because okay. I was, as I said, I'd, you know, I was, I was not writing anything because everything I wrote technically belonged to my publishers, yes. and I was trying to get out of that uh, mm -hmm. contract. So, it, there, there was no, con you know, it, not, it didn't contradict it. it there, was, there was no. Uh, Can I interrupt uh, you yeah. there? With the with the songwriters, especially in London, who are the famous songwriters you've been working with? Oh, I was very blessed because uh, I I was signed up. Um, I was introduced to a chap called Clifford Adams, who was the ex-manager of Fleetwood Mac, and uh, you must have heard of Fleetwood yeah. Mac. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, yeah. and he he took me under his wing yeah. as a manager, and he uh, guided my my career, um, and then he introduced me to um, the. I think it was the ex-accountant of Fleetwood Mac who had started his own publishing company, yeah. introduced me to him, mm -hmm. uh, a guy called David Simmons. And S David introduced me to a whole load of wonderful writers. And yeah. I started working with uh, um, Jeff Morrow, uh, who was part of Arnold Martin and Morrow, who wrote I Can't Smile Without You for Barry Manilow. Oh, okay. And I know you covered that song, oh, yeah, and you yeah. did a fabulous version of oh, it. Thank you. I've heard your version of it. Yeah. I think it's very, very good. Yeah. Um, and so I was working with some fabulous people, Lionel Bart, who had written Oliver. I was, uh, you know, working yeah, with him. Yes. And yeah. So yeah. I was very blessed, and yeah. it was it was really wonderful. I have heard many Neil, Neil, Neil Diamond tribute shows in Vegas and a few other countries I've been, but uh, I can proudly say the one and only Sri Lankan is yourself. It's the closest to the Neil Diamond sound. I mean, it's you've been gifted with that voice of yours. It was a mixed blessing, Derek, because in my when, uh, during my uh, uh, stint as a recording artist, it was a big problem because I didn't set out to sing like Neil Diamond. I didn't set out to sound like Neil Diamond. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that yeah, yeah. that was how it was. And and uh, every time I worked at trying not to song like Neil Diamond, yeah. it it. It just was very. Um, it just didn't work. It just, just didn't happen. You yeah. know, uh, it was insincere. Yeah. Um, in fact, Sheila Ferguson, who was the lead singer of uh, Three Degrees, I don't know whether you know yeah, Three Degrees. When will I see you again? Yeah, and all yeah. that. Um, I performed at uh, at, a, at a party, a, a celeb party. I, I, I was invited to, to the party, and then you know, a song. And she came up to me and she said. Neil Diamond wrote a lot of good songs for you, didn't he? She said, you should have sung his songs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he should have just written for you. You know, it was that sort of a thing. Yeah. It, you know, it was almost a joke. Yeah. And, and uh, But uh, yeah, so my first album was actually shell thrown away by my record company yeah. because they said this sounds too much like you know, too much like Neil Diamond. You have to go and, yeah. and work at it. So In your music career, what's the highest or the best achievement you have uh, uh, got? Well, um, that's 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 very difficult because you know um, everything I did as 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 a musician, as an artist, as a writer, as a performer, uh, I, I did as a in, 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 with a very matter of fact uh, attitude because it was I'd started at five yeah. years old, so by the time I was you know like twenty five. I'd been in the business for yeah, 20 sure. years, yeah. 
you know. Um, so it, it, that from that point of view, it, it, there's nothing. But my greatest, greatest, greatest joy uh, was hearing my daughter sing the first time I heard her sing. Okay. Um, Can I ask you how many kids have you? I've got three children. Right. Okay. Um, and and my daughter was one of the, not because and she's my names? daughter. She's Lauren. Uh, yeah. She's Lauren. My middle son is uh, Luke, who's uh, doing his uh, masters in music mm -hmm. at the Leeds College of Music. Uh, and my youngest son is Mark, who's a lovely drummer. Um, mm -hmm. So they're all they're all gifted musicians, but they're not interested in it. Yeah. yeah. Not at all. Um, so, but my the greatest joy was watching my my son and daughter performing together okay uh, and, and so those were those are bigger yeah. moments that you know yeah. or was, uh, i don't know parent, you know, yeah I, I mean I, I, your question was what wh what do i think my greatest achievement was and i'm taking what they achieved and calling it my achievement but <laughs> the fact that they were my children yeah, 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 <laughs> you know right, was, right. was was wonderful to just yeah. see them it was yeah. it was absolutely wonderful uh, finally uh, joey but i want to ask you there'll be so many musicians and songwriters watching the, our program what sort of an advice you will give a songwriter to go on to follow your footsteps? Well, look, this is the, the, I, I, I love this question because um, I, have, I have tried, especially in, in Sri Lanka, to, to try and try and tell songwriters that, you know, there are two approaches yeah. to, to, to songwriting. One is a songsmith, commercial songwriter, if you want to write a song, a chirpy, chirpy, cheap, cheap song for yeah. somebody to sing, or if you want to be something, you know, like a, a sort of profoundly intense songwriter, like Leonard Cohen or something yeah. like that. Um, uh, or, uh, there's no money in that unless you're mm -hmm. really fabulous. But with the commercial songwriters, I always tell them, look, don't be too sophisticated. Yeah. Be very simple. Be very, s you know, uh, I mean, I have sung La Bamba for 30, 40 odd years. Yeah. I still don't know what La Bamba means. <laughs> Do you know what La Bamba means? No. Exactly. And have you sung it? I, I, I. Exactly. That is the secret of songwriting. Yeah. That is the that is the magic of songwriting, is to be able to take something that really means nothing to somebody else, yeah. but make it make it happen for happen them. for them. You know. I mean. So that is what I try to tell people. Even even in s singles and now with the global world music market, is to keep it simple, and and make it catchy. Whatever the words you use, keep them simple and find that one little catchy thing that will stick in someone's mind. And yeah. you know, that's not the only advice I can give artists or writers or whatever. Yeah. Joey, I got to tell you, it's been very interesting talking to you. And let me wish you all the very best in your career. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you in the near future giving us more information about your career. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Th thank, thank you for having me. Thank, thank you very much. Our sponsors are Prestige Robes and Screens, Travel Talk, Transco Cargo, Southern Star Motors, Colombo Money Transfer, Fairfield Lawyers, Techno Motors, Forever Skin Naturals, D Legal, Sahandro.